Uh, we would like to now invite uh, Dr. Suhas Haldipurkar, sir, who is the father of echoemulsification and a great teacher. And whenever we have a PCR, it's how you remain calm and what are the tips and tricks to bail you out, uh, sir, would be now elucidating. Over Thank to you, you, sir. Thank you, Anaga. Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, any surgeon worth his salt, especially the eye surgeon, if he has not had PCR, then he has probably not gone through it. You have to have your PCRs before you really graduate into a good ophthalmologist. With this, uh, let's delve into, uh, you know, what, uh, see, when you talk of PCR, there are three R's that you should remember. Uh, you have to recognize, you know, half your battle is won, and when you recognize that there's a PCR or there's something wrong, then, of course, you have to prepare your response, and then, obviously, you have to do repair. Now, I remember, you know, our Dr. Daljit Singh, uh, way back, in one of his talks, he said, the moment I have PCR, I just close everything, go out, have a cup of coffee, and come back. You know, that's the time I take to kind of plan, you know, wh what I really intend to do. There was some sense in what he wanted to say. Now, we, we have to remember one thing. Now, AC has two separate quadrants. You have the central one and the peripheral. And the central one is a deep one. So obviously, the central one is a safe zone that you should be all the time being, you know, you have to be in. So if you stay within the central safe zone, your chances of getting PCR become less. But if you, what happens, like it was said in the uh, previous, uh, you know, slides by Dr. Uh, uh, I think Mahipal, you know, you tend to go to the periphery because that's where the nucleus is small and that's where you really get into problem. Now, now this is a classic example. You know, the surge initiates a PC snap around the edge of a piece of nucleus. What happens is you, if you, if you don't really stay uh, in the right space, then uh, this kind of a, uh, this kind of a occurrence happens. So one has to be very careful because all these things are avoidable. And of course, there are some cardinal signs that we have to remember because PCR will not occur without forewarning. You know, there'll be sudden deepening of AC, there'll be brightening of red reflex, there'll be that famous snap sign, the momentary dilatation of the pupil or a pupillary dance, and of course, the loss of followability which you should be very observant. Now, this is a classic case. Not very often you get to see it in your professional life. You notice that? That's a classic snap. Now, what has happened is the hydro dissection was not really a very aggressive one. But I, if a surgeon misses that, that clearly says that your PC has really given way. And if you don't stop there, and change the plan of your surgery, you are in for trouble because, you know, eventually the nucleus starts sinking down. Now, see, very often you get to see these because when your residents are operating, if, if they don't really, you know, keep pay attention to some of these details. Now, if you look at this, you know, as he progresses, and the way he's doing his hydro dissection by, you know, to me, they look very aggressive. And at some stage, you know, you have the, uh, you know, loss of flow, um, followability. And then you start noticing that there's a kind of a different reflex that you see. See, you see a line there. <coughs> now, that's when he says, uh, sir, you know, I really, uh, you know, can't make out what's there. So why don't you come and have a look? And the mentor goes to have a look. He says, stop. And then he tries, ask him to come out. And the moment that uh, the piece is, you know, hand piece is, I mean, the fake tip is taken out, because the line that you're seeing was the tear that was occurring. And it was all the time occurring if you're careful enough uh, uh, to notice it. See, PCR management primarily has two objectives. The primary objective is safe and thorough cleaning of lens fragments and vitreous from the anterior segment. And, of course, the secondary one is if you are able to do a very stable placement of intraocular lens in the most appropriate position that you can think of. Factors that affect your management will be at what stage the PCR took place, at what stage, what was the extent of the PCR, 
and what's your plan B that's available to you and uh, uh, other things. Now here is a case of a pre-existing PCR, pre-existing PC defect and obviously it's a case of posterior polar. So the surgeon has planned it so well, he has done hydro delineation, he's careful with his parameters, he first thing he wants to do is get the endonucleus out at the same time going into epinucleus mode without letting his phaco tip you know away from the epinucleus and on very low parameters he tries to get as much of it as possible without disturbing much of vitreous phase at some stage when he feels that enough is enough he quickly goes with uh, viscoelastic from the side and then now he does what's famously known as visco dissection or visco separation of because this is what you want to get out before you really delve into managing that PCR because PCR is quite extensive you will have to do anterior vitrectomy you'll have to do all that but before that you want all these dropping you know cortical things from uh, going down now coming back to that case that I was showing you uh, you know uh, it has occurred but fortunately what has happened is there's been a punch out hole in the PC now once you have a PCR remember to convert it into a PC Tommy that means it's circular the moment it's circular then you have one half the battery but here fortunately the punched out hole was circular so the best next best thing the surgeon does is get that nucleus onto the safe area and the safe area is on the iris then he inject dispersive viscoelastic to push back or prevent vitreous from coming forward and then first thing he does is try and get most of the cortex out and after that is a time for you to go with a cutter then go with time alone, check if there's any vitreous disturbance and after having checked all that he, you know the surgeon goes to the next stage and that is um, uh, doing a lens scaffolding now you would notice that it's a single piece being inserted normally scaffolding done with third three piece but here the single piece is in, uh, you know implanted because eventually the final position that lens is going to be in the back because the PC tummy is a contained one and there's not going to be any fear of a tear so once the lens is in the sulcus you uh, uh, manage the nucleus fragment as it is and after that you use hooks to open up the pupil in that particular segment and get both the, seg both the haptics into the back and now you have a lens which is sitting in the back the reason for using this is you will no normally have a lens that is reserved for that patient and in case you have to put a lens in the sulcus sometimes you have to have a, uh, an, an extra lens with a changed IOL port now this is where uh, what matters is be very careful you saw that pupillary dance now that is something you just can't miss check it again see that is a very important sign for you to stop now what do you do you stop there inject viscoelastic push viscoelastic under the rexis margin now here you are using dispersive viscoelastic find a gap between the rexis margin and the nucleus and push it so that your viscoelastic has gone under the nucleus and then if you remember the supracapsular phacos you know you get the nucleus out of the bag you know that something has gone wrong but you, you have not seen it because this PCR is uh, you're not seen but you know for sure that there's a PCR so get the nucleus out of the bag and then once you get it out of the bag obviously the next step that you do is uh, go for uh, scaffolding because the entire nucleus is present there and such times uh, obvious the, the, the ideal uh, lens of choice is a three piece lens you keep it in the sulcus even if it stays on the iris it doesn't matter as long as it is below the nucleus then you go about your um, uh, nucleus management the way you would do it and here what's important is there are two approaches one you can go past plana and clean up that uh, disturbed vitreous or you go anterior like in this case inject time serum the time serum is the only thing that will tell you how much of vitreous is there and how much if it's mixed up with cortex clean it up if you are meticulous enough finally you have a cleanup that is uh, you know uh, quite good with minimal droppings into the vitreous 
and then the lens is obviously uh, placed in the third sulcus and if by chance if you are lucky that your axis is small and circular you can always do uh, uh, the capture and sometimes you think everything is done your surgery has gone off well and this is the time I am about to put my lens into the uh, back it's a single piece lens see the 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 tragedy can strike you from any corner now in this case the injector malfunctions and the lens is almost to be delivered there's a sudden gush of it because because of uh, you know malfunctioning and what has happened unfortunately is that haptic has gone and hit the poster capsule now the lens is almost in the back now you have two choices either you pull that lens get into the sulcus or get it totally outside the eye but then I decide to get it get the lens into the bag properly then rotate it in the comfort most comfortable position that you can here what has happened is the vitreous has still not come into the AC vitreous is very much uh, you know held back there and then to my luck my rexis is small and circular you just go with a spatula under the capsule under the optics and just lift it up and do a reverse capture now for a single piece lens when you do reverse capture the moment you deepen the AC it falls back but if your X is small enough and, and then, then, the, then the optic really sticks well and uh, I mean you save the day for yourself here you don't have to you know do anything you have no explanation to do the patient probably in this case I, I didn't even tell the patient that you had PCR and I had to do this if, if and when the time comes maybe I can but this is what it is so with minimal discussion and with minimal uh, intervention you could avert, avert this tragedy so in conclusion the cortex removal uh, in the presence of vitreous you have to remember one thing the vitreous cutter has two settings it can be in cut, cut IA mode for vitrectomy or IA cut mode in cortex aspiration cortex aspiration when you do you do with low flow and low aspiration and the aspiration tip is brought very close to the cortex before initiating the aspiration so in conclusion PCR can be avoided if you anticipate it and proactively take necessary steps to avoid it and PCR can be managed well with proper planning and sticking to details and always always be prepared in every other way with plan B in your hands thank you so much thank you thank you so much sir that was a beautiful presentation